congratulations on the movie. It's a beautiful film. Thank you so Thank much. You. It oh. is just a beautiful movie, just very subtly done. I was really struck by that. And um, and considering when it comes to working on a movie like this, which takes place during a specific period in history, what is the first rule you feel you have to follow when you're doing work on it? Be true to the film and true to the director, what his, what his thoughts are and what he wants to accomplish. That's mm -hmm. the first part. Then you get me. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and then and then also the actors, because they they're wearing this 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 role. You know, this is who they are, and it's so important that uh, this is a true story. This is not fiction or this is something that actually happened and we're replicating Mildred and, and Richard Loving. We're making these two people that are acting in, into them and that's the big challenge but it's such a joy when it's done with secure people. Yeah. 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 In terms of creating their looks, um, was there ever like um, like cliches or tropes from the period that you wanted to sort of work with or perhaps avoid? Um. No, I wanted to stay very true to the time. We wanted to get as close as we could to the real lovings and and um, yeah. And that's yeah. the most important thing, you know, because this is a story that you're telling about two real live people that have lived this this history. So you're replicating, and you want it to be as close to what it was really all about, from her hair to his hair, because you start with his hair. He had very very dark hair, so to bring him to a, a natural looking blonde, that was a feat unto itself. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you specifically have to do that, to get the, the hair blonde? Well, I, first of all, we, I had to go through a series of bleaching him. Uh, you know, I could go as far as I could go maybe in a, any given day, but thank God we had enough days of prep to, by the time we started filming, that he was there because it, it goes to, you know, different stages and uh, you've seen guys that bleach their hair and you know it's bleached. And then for him, for him I wanted to be as real as possible, which it did really well. And, uh, but it was a, a work of uh, love. And, and I mean, I, I use the word love very loosely and very meaningfully because that's what this whole thing was about because we had to trust each other. He had to, first day we met, it was like, Hey, we we gonna be friends. <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. That always helps. But you, but you felt it, you know. It was it was real. He didn't know me from Adam, you know. And he had this little black boys coming up to make you a blonde, you know. It's it's pretty awesome. But it worked so well. And he and he's so funny. He just says whatever comes to his mind, too, as do I. So. I've never got my hair bleached, but is it like I always figured it was just like one big process. But is it several though? It's several, especially with dark hair. His hair is actually darker than yours. And so consequently, to get, you know, because it goes through various stages. You go through an orange stage and a red stage. And, and if you don't get to the right shade of lightness, it'll go green. Mm. And so that's something you have to really, really think about. And I didn't want to use, uh, I'm using bleach. So I didn't want to use a toner that had any kind of peroxide or anything in it. So I had to use some, a rinse of sorts that I had chosen the color that I wanted to use. And so every day I would use that because when he'd go home, he could wash his hair and it would just come out and it would be kind of whitish. But I used a beige-like toner on him, which gave the, the effect that I needed. And then with him being in the sun, because he worked in the sun a lot, the sun was bleaching him out too, so it's you know I had a whole lot of factors going with with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when it rained, I was like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be unfortunate. Yeah, uh, and it rained a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of like again going back to this taking place in the fifties and sixties, did you ever feel compelled to use like the same products the Lovings used? in that era in that period or did you just work with what you had today um i i just worked with what i had today um and also i mean we for them they didn't wear makeup you know they didn't wear foundation and you know eyeshadow they were very simple working you know family they didn't get all gussied up <laughs> so oh, i tried true. to keep it very point. very close to um 
you know, the pictures, the references I had of the family. Oh, good. But for her here, I did go and find old products. I found old greases and old oils that my mother and grandmother, and I thought it was really important that I have those products so you get the texture and the, the sheen that they had on their hair when they were getting their hair done. And in particular, when they moved to D.C., in the country, it didn't matter because she was just her own natural self. But when they moved to the city, she gets her hair cut after that first baby. And, uh, yeah, well, I did use old products. I didn't try to use anything contemporary except conditioners. Yeah. I always wondered about that. I figured, you know, it's like when it's a period, you kind of want to go back to where it all sort of started. Yeah. But I imagine it's different from person to person and film to film. But you want that smell. You know, there's something about curling your hair with that grease. You could smell it. You know, it was like, and sometime, if you, I, I remember one day, it got a little warm. Somebody said, I smell something. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> but you, you, need, you need all of that. It's, it's the reality of it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, having talked to people um, like yourselves that, you know, work behind the scenes, and I'm always curious, do you prefer your work to be showy in a movie, or do you want it to just, like, disappear into the framework of the story? I definitely wanted it to disappear into the framework of the story, because <laughs> I, I didn't want it to be about makeup. You know, this is, I wanted it to be about them you know I didn't want to see makeup or notice you know notice makeup so for me I wanted it to just look very real and natural nice yeah. and then to replicate her hair you I wanted it to be as authentic as it was to the real Mildred and so I stuck to that and uh, it was still unobtrusive you didn't really pay it any mind other than it was pretty and sometimes a little raggedy and which I wanted you to see everything that it went through you know because there were times that she was just frazzled too, even though she was the pillar of that family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in terms of the photos, we got to see some of the photos in the other room, and how informative were they to um, your your process? Very, very, yeah. very, very. Yeah. And then you you, you take uh, Joel. He was very interested, and in he he understood what the character should be about. So be able to talk to him and communicate and he convey his thoughts to you about what he wanted for that. So it was, it, it made it easy, you know, like I say, and then when you have someone that, hey, uh, Charles in charge, and, and, and you can have a conversation with Charles and Charles in charge, it's really good. So I enjoyed the fact that we were able to have open dialogue. That's great, mm -hmm. it always helps. And uh, have you two worked with Jeff Nichols previously? Uh, I worked with him on Take Shelter. Mm -hmm. I mean, what were, was this more a challenging project for you to work on than Take Shelter, or? Yes, yes, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. it was. Um, just uh, in terms of, um, I just wanted it to be very real and, and not, um, you know, not about makeup. It wasn't a makeup, we, of course I did makeup on it, but I, I, wanted, it to, I wanted it to look very real. out that way. It did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything in this movie feels real, which is great because, I mean, this is a movie that could have been very over dramatic, over the top, like, yeah. I deserve the right to be with my wife, yeah. yeah. you know, but, it, you know, in the end, like you said, these are simple people. Oh, They're not yeah. really looking to be heroes. They're just looking to live their lives with a yeah. family, which is what anybody should be allowed to do. Yeah. So, um, because it's, um, some movies, they sort of like overdo it, but you guys kind of sort of kept it very subtle. I mean, yeah. is it tricky to keep it that subtle? As, as subtle as the acting? Yeah. yeah, sometimes it definitely is. You know, you're, yeah, it was in the heat and <laughs> in the yeah. rain, you're we trying some, to, like, keep it on. And <laughs> we have a lot of factors, because it rains yeah. in Richmond. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then when it gets hot, it gets hot in Richmond. Yeah. And it was, uh, well, yeah, we did. A, we had a lot of muddy days there, you yeah. know. And, uh, <laughs> With the party scene at the at the uh, uh, juke joint, mm -hmm. we had to shut down because it was so much thunder and lightning, and the generators they didn't want them to be caught. In, in <laughs> <laughs> so we sat on a van for a couple of hours before we were able to resume shooting again. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it was it was it was trying, but it was fun trying. It wasn't a Ugly, you know, you've worked on some projects, and you say, oh, I can't wait for this to be ugly. <laughs> but it wasn't none of that ever. It was just, uh, I learned a lot. I, I, I was being taught. Good. 
good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember Virginia. I, I went. I visited there years ago, and it's it was very hot, and it was also very rainy. Yeah, it's all over the place. It is. <laughs> yeah, yes, I imagine. We worked in uh, uh, pl- on plantations, and there were still slave quarters in some of them, you know, and it was really a lot of ghosts there. A lot yeah, of ghosts, yeah. and uh, for me, I could really yeah, feel, feel it. it. When we were walking those roads at night and mm-hmm. stuff, you could just feel those spirits yeah. in there and what had happened to a lot of people. So consequently, uh, for them to come, when they were sitting on the steps uh, that night, that's kind of like the opening, uh, in a way, it's, yeah. it's, it's eerie, just that location. And then I found out uh, after the fact that when it's really pretty in days, uh, people go out there to get married on, on those plantations and they have big, fabulous weddings and all of that exists still, you know. And I met some of the owners of those places and they were old. I mean, I'm old, but they were old. I'm not lying. And they were very staid and very, you knew who they were and uh, they didn't cut the mustard, you know, they spoke their truth, and you knew where you were. Yeah, yeah you, that's fascinating. It was, it was, and it wasn't a, an angry kind of being, but it was a, an awakening kind of being, knowing, wow, this is still in existence, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it kind of really informs the production in a sense, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because this is, I mean, to see this, I mean, it, it there's, there's this, a level of almost, uh, sadness to the story because even though they won their case you know it's sort of like the the next step up to what happened with you know gay marriage you know absolutely but see this is and i speak of that too because this is a correlation actually that kind of opened doors for the for the gay and lesbian community Mm -hmm. and i think it's it's you can applaud that you know but it's it still hasn't done what it's supposed to do but it's it's a it's a beginning of sorts and it's so nice to they can just come out <clears throat> and, and to love someone. But I don't know if people really, I hope they see in this film that real love that they had for each other, because that's what was conveyed to me in watching the film. And watching, you know, like a lot of times watching it on the monitor and stuff, but to see it on the big screen, it's like, Look what they did! Look how look at the love they have! Look how she's when she had that baby on her hip on the in the kitchen and ironing. Mm-hmm. Those kinds of things were. That was my mom. I, I remember my mother. I mean, she had no baby on her hip, but she'd be ironing and cooking and doing all that. And the kitchen wasn't much bigger than that, you know. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was real. It was it was memories. I was flooded with instant memories, and. Uh, those smells, like I say, of the hair, I could I could hear it, smell it in my kitchen at my mother's house when they'd be doing each other's hair, and it was whew, a reawakening, I would say. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I imagine, yeah. But uh, Jeff, like I say, he, he just he, he knew what he wanted, and he, he the actors understood him. They were able to communicate. He was able to communicate what he wanted from them. And you, the subtleties that you speak of, and it's not a big dialogue movie. It's not a big conversation movie. It's, 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 it's inside. It's all inside. It gets in you. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like what you do with a little look, yes, as opposed to yes. like a big speech or no, you don't need yeah. all, any of that. Mm-mm. You can convey that whole a whole scene without a word almost. And that scene in when she's in jail, yeah. and then he threatens to throw this guy in there with her. When he's going by, that was like powerful, and she cowers into that corner. Yeah. And she 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 killed him. She <laughs> killed him. She locked <laughs> him. Oh, she did. Yeah, that was a frightening. No, scene. she was no <laughs> jokes. But everything that she did, it had meaning to it. There was even down to having that baby when they were in D.C. She said. Uh-uh, your mother's supposed to be delivering this baby. And it was so amazing because that scarf we put on her head, it, was, it had a pattern in it. And every time I had to tie it, I had to make sure the pattern lined up. It was the same. You remember that day? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, people don't, you know, you don't think about those kinds of things, but mm-hmm. you see that scarf every time, that pattern is in that same spot, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you two are on the set, um, I imagine if things go wrong, you're like, you have like a whole kit ready just in case. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I mean, were there a lot of emergencies? Did you have to do that a lot? No. No. Mm-hmm. No. no. Not at all. That was the blessing. See, that's the, when you're working with secure people and people, because I've worked with actors that, do this, and do that, and play with their hair, and they don't understand. Well, a good actor understands. So he would never do that, mm-hmm. or she. But uh, when you start to shoot, uh, when they do another take, that hair has to be where it started. You know, it can't be over here if it started over here. You know right. what I'm saying? Okay. And that happens. So you have to be like this. You know, oh God, it's it sometimes can be very trying. I did Mississippi Masala, and uh, one of my actresses, she was new, pretty, gorgeous head of hair, and she was forever doing this. <laughs> I was like, I said, let me tell you something here. <laughs> this is my head of hair. Don't do that again. Right. Not, I'm going to be here looking. I don't want to be in your uh, line, your eye line, but I'm here, Okay. Right. No more hands in your hair. Put your hand up here, do whatever you want to do, but do not put your hands in your hair. You know? <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, is there anything you, you two would like actors to know most about your job or how they can help you do their job? No, because mm-hmm. that's that's we're independent of what they do. They're independent of what we do. Mm-hmm. This is how they work, so you have to work with them. They're the reason that you have a job. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now you can... <laughs> 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 you can have a... a, a you can... A, a secure actor, you can have a conversation with, you know, and, and say, you know, I think that uh, maybe if you... Whatever it is you need to say, you can say it to someone that you can really be secure with, you know. But insecure actors look like you, like you lost your mind, you know, mm-hmm. so... You pick your you pick your battles, and uh, but no, 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 no. Uh-uh. Yeah. And, and 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 it comes with time. They gotta learn as as did I. You know, it's like before I used to didn't think anything of it. I'd do there and I'd be gone. You know, I mean I'd be on set, but I wouldn't really be on it. Right. And then one day I saw something. I said, mm-hmm, Okay, you better get, you gotta stay here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What what influenced your decisions to get into the type of jobs that you do on movies? Um, I always wanted to do it since I was a little kid. <laughs> I'd always be doing hair and makeup, and um, I, I from the time I was probably thirteen, I was doing hair and makeup on everybody. Oh, sweet! <laughs> so um, I was luckily I was lucky to land in this field, you know. But um, it, it was always with me. I think. <laughs> me the same. I uh, I was. Uh, as a kid, I used to I had girls live across the street. I'd mess with their hair, and then uh, I had a, when I got out of school, I opened my own salon, and a friend of mine was working on uh, the Jeffersons. He was a, hair, a makeup artist, and uh, Marla Gibbs, his hairstylist, had passed away, and she needed to go somewhere. And he asked me would I go to her house and do her hair, and I said yeah. You know, I went and did her hair, and she paid me, and I thanked her, and she thanked me, and I left. And a week later, she called me and asked me if I'd like to do her show, 227. So that opened the door for me, you know, and it's been no looking back since then. Nice. Mm-hmm. And what would you say is the hardest project you two have worked on to date? Oh, well, gosh. For me, uh, the one that really worked me was American Gangster because we did four periods. Mm. And uh, so I, we had to go from Afros to... <laughs> no, we went all over the place, you know. And But it was such a rewarding time of my life, that, because I had that whole well over there was full of nothing but wigs from top to bottom. Oh, uh, yeah, we had, and I had people, thank God, people that knew and paid attention, and they, they just kept us rolling, but that was one of the better movies and one of the good things that I did, and where I learned a lot. I learned a lot, a lot. Nice, yeah, four decades. I forgot about that. Yeah, I've, I love that movie. It's just four decades. Yeah, yeah, we were, I mean, you know, you had it. And you can imagine going from this to this in, in, the, in the same day. Sometimes we'd have to shoot uh, two or three different 
periods in that same day. So we were changing here like crazy. But we did. We, we did it. I mean, we had a big time, you know. And when I'd leave there, then I'd have somebody come in at night and set wigs for the next day. Yeah. No. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> and you're working with Ridley Scott, who's Ridley a sucker was amazing. For, yeah, He's sucker amazing. for detail, too. Oh, yeah. he was amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. How about you, Julia? What would you say is the hardest project? Um, well, it was probably my first movie because I had no idea what it meant to be on a set and continuity, and um, I I learned a lot. But um, I had no I thought I was just doing makeup on people, but I didn't realize it was you have to do continuity and you have to keep things the same and you have to do three or four changes in a day. Yeah. So uh, I'd say my first my first film that I did. Mm -hmm. Which I don't think anybody knows. <laughs> Thank goodness. But this was my this was my buddy here. Mm -hmm. We we met on this film, and we still see each other. And it's been over a year now. And um, but she became a dear dear friend. Uh, she and her family have been just a joy every step <laughs> of the way. For birthday parties, her little boy is my grand my godchild. You know, it's just been that kind of party. Nice. Oh, yeah, we, well, the one thing to definitely keep in mind is that continuity is a big thing. In oh, <laughs> yeah. And, and people, you'd be, I spoke with someone earlier today, and they were talking about continuity and about cups and saucers on one side, and then all of a sudden it's over on another side, <laughs> and a, a part that's on this side. But that's the same thing I was just saying about you have to be on top of it. You really, really do. And, yeah, absolutely. And it's so important. It's, uh, this is this is a luxury to be in this business. It really is. It's helped me to do and achieve so many things and see so much of the world, this business. I've been, you know, a lot of places because of film and TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I bet. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank very you. informative. <laughs>